Welcome back to part two of the Carry Rigid Bodies series. In the last video, we learned how to make moving objects carry rigid bodies when they move. However, there comes an issue when the platform supporting one rotates instead of moving. Yeah, that doesn't look right, does it? But today, we'll turn that into this. For the purpose of this video, I've made a little platform here and given it a sensor area. You can see the sensor as three separate objects to match the shape of the platform. But they all communicate with the same carrier root object. Carry Rigid Bodies is attached to the platform, and I've also given it an auto move and rotate script. Let's get started by opening up our Carry Rigid Bodies script we made in the other video and continuing where we left off. So this script moves rigid bodies based on movement velocity using frame-to-frame -frame calculation. Since we want to move by rotation as well, we'll have to cache the current rotation by Euler angles so we can determine our angular velocity for each frame as well. So in start, cache the current Euler angles of the carrier. But make sure you don't use local, we want every value to be global for the carrier. Then go down to late update where we determine our movement velocity, and let's find our angular velocity the same way. I'll just copy and paste from start to ensure we always update the angles after each frame. So getting the angular velocity is just like we got movement, just subtract the cached angle value from the current angle. Now that we know how much on each angle the rigid bodies need to move, we're going to rotate them based on that value. But to keep things clean, I'll operate this using a separate function, and call it Rotate Rigid Bodies. Because of the method I'm going to use, we'll want a float value to determine our actual angle for rotation. Use the built-in Rotate Around method, since we want to stay in sync with the origin of the carrier. Pass in the carrier origin as the pivot point, vector 3 up is our axis, and the angle will be the amount we provide. One thing to keep in mind is that we're only going to take the rotation of the y-axis into account. Since gravity should handle any vertical rotations, after all, we only want to handle horizontal. Which means the float that we pass in to rotate by will equal the angular velocity's y-value. Now, if we run the code, we should be able to maintain our position on the carrier when it moves and rotates without ever needing to be parented to it. You see stuff like this in games all the time, like Legend of Zelda where you may jump across moving platforms. So I'm just going to move my character onto the edge here, rotate her around, and let's play. So we're in the game, I'm going to go to my auto move script and just make the carrier rotate for a moment. Again on the Y axis, and you can see Nora is now being carried with it even though the position isn't changing. Even as we walk across this thing, we're still being supported with no problem. Uh, hang on. It appears I spoke too soon. So we've got a little issue there, but that's fine, because I think I know what's causing it. As I mentioned before, I've got three sensors on this carrier. Now, with the setup of our detection, when we enter a sensor, we're added to a control list, and when we exit, we leave the control list. But if you look closely, you can see that she enters one sensor before she exits another. So even though she might still be in one of the three sensors, she only has to fully exit one of them to be removed. Thus why she fell off the platform earlier. Now, we could correct that by adjusting the distance of the sensors from one another, but that won't always work, because the size of your characters will be different. Instead, I think it'd be in our best interest to configure the sensors with individual memories, so that in order to lose the support of the carrier, we'd have to exit all of the sensors. Let's move to the sensor script and create a hidden list of rigid bodies that this sensor will use to know what objects are inside it. You can see the same thing for our carrier, so you can just copy and paste there. Now when we add a rigid body to the list, we should also add it to the sensor's memory, but only do that if it's not already contained. and repeat for exit, only change add to remove. Now here's the important part, when we're set to remove the carrier list on exit, we want to remove only if the rigid body isn't in any of the sensors, 
We'll do that by making a new function for our carrier called tryRemove based on sensors for the rigid body. The function's going to be really simple. We'll take the provided rigid body and just check it against the lists in each of our attached sensors to see if any of them currently hold that object. But currently we haven't stored our sensors, we've just related them to the carrier on start. So let's make a list of sensors up in our variables. You can actually make this private, since we'll only reference it from this behavior. There, now when we assign the carrier to each sensor, let's also add the sensor to our list. And just to be safe for the future, I'm also going to alert myself if I've forgotten to add any sensors to a carrier that I've set to depend on them. Now we can go back to our try remove function and check each sensor's internal list to see if we can actually remove it yet. I'm going to run the ever famous for loop to iterate through each sensor. During this loop, if we find that any sensor is touching the object we want to remove, we'll immediately break the operation and return a false boolean to indicate that the removal was unsuccessful. With that in mind, let's change our return value from void to boolean. Now, if we've reached this section, then that means the rigid body is not touching any sensor and we can remove it. So remove it from the carrier's list and return true, indicating that the removal was successful. Now our sensor should be able to use that function, and we'll be able to move across the carrier and through the sensors without losing support. So let's try it out now, but watch the public list of rigid bodies on the right. So we see I'm in the list now, and I've just left, entered another sensor, and I'm still in. Notice I'm only actually removed when I jump, and aren't touching any of the sensors anymore. So now let's rotate and check it out. So far, so good. Alright, that looks good. Now let's test out rotating and moving at the same time. I'll just give us some values here and rotate on Y. Maybe a little rising. Alright. Okay, there's an issue there. It's kind of weird. Looks like it was working for a second, but my movement was off. Just recenter her and take a better look at that. Okay, yeah, so we are moving, but I know rotation and movement worked fine on their own, but somehow they're misbehaving when put together. Mm hmm. Even there, it looks like I'm moving in the wrong direction, so I'm assuming this is because the orientation of the carrier is changing. I bet I did something wrong in terms of movement earlier. The movement by itself is working fine. As soon as we start rotating and the, and the orientation of that thing changes, that's when we start moving off axis. Alright, and the problem is that I'm taking a global vector, which is our velocity, and applying it with the carrier's local forward reference. Applying it globally will fix it. Just be careful, because it's easy to put the wrong variables in places they don't belong. So once we've corrected my ID10T error, everything should be good to go. Alright, good, now we're working perfectly. You can see that our platform's not only moving, but rotating as well, and it's carrying our rigid body player with it. This will carry any rigid body, mind you. Not just a character, obviously. Alright, that concludes the video. Hope this proved useful. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, and if you want to see more, you can subscribe to our channel, because we'll be uploading many more videos as we go. Stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.